How are you doing, lads? Welcome to another episode on our accounting series. Uh, this is going to be the first of a three-part series on the different types of nukes you can use. So this very, very first video here, we're going to be talking about pseudo-nuking. Uh, this was the very, very first nuke that I started with. And for the most part, it is probably my favorite in terms of the damage that it does, just because it's an absolute pain to patch. So with that being said, we'll just hop straight into it. Now you'll notice with this cannon especially, with this sand comp here, this doesn't all go off at once. It takes a bit of time for that sand to start dropping. More specifically, oh Jesus, a bit iffy today. More specifically, it'll take one redstone tick for each row to start dropping. So if we fire that, you can see there that we get that nice sand stack, but you could also see there that with our compressor, that's actually started dropping sand and doesn't drop all at once, drops it in that order. Now, to prove that, uh, we're gonna use order of entities, uh, where the first, first thing, say, to stack with our hammer is the very, very first thing to fall. So what we're actually gonna do here is to prove this, we're actually gonna make this sand here set gravel. So, and we'll set this one to gravel as well, because these are both falling in the same Redstone tick. So as those pistons push out, it goes that one first, this one second, and then this one we're going to make. Let's make this red sand. Was it that one? Set red sand. Yes. Okay. So we're going to set that one there to red sand. So what's basically going to happen at the wall is the can's going to fire. And what's going to do is it's going to stack this first, this second, this third, this fourth, this fifth. So when we fire this, you should see that it does all come through in that order. So it all drops in a sequence there. We fire that. Bang. So you can see there, sand, gravel, sand, red sand, sand. Of course, we've got our one-shot sand at the top. That is kind of irrelevant for this part of the video. Now, the reason why I show that is because pseudo-nuking is abusing this order of entities. So before we get into pseudo-nuking, uh, we will just very, very quickly explain sort of the basis that this is on. So when you drop sand here, sand... I haven't talked about rendering sand yet, but sand is always the very, very last thing to render unless you were using hand placed TNT. Now, hand placed TNT renders after sand, um, but hand placed TNT is currently disabled on complex because people like me abuse the absolute shit out of it. So, what we're going to talk about now is why that's important. So, basically, what we're going to be doing here with our pseudo nuke is we're going to be abusing this order of entities so we get a bunch of individual little holes in the wall. So the way that we're going to do that is we're actually going to be dispensing TNT in between uh, drops of this sand. So say if we have sand falling here, we're going to drop TNT at whatever redstone tick this sand falls, whatever redstone tick this sand falls, three, four, five. So we're going to have five separate sections of TNT all separated by a redstone tick. So basically what's going to happen is if we fire this cannon again, or actually we might just leave that as is to be honest. So what we're going to imagine is we have actually fired TNT at each of these redstone ticks. Now because sand is always the last to, last to render um, in our little complex world here, what we're actually going to do is when we fire TNT, say if this sand's dropping at 20, just as a random number, if this sand's dropping at 20, this sand's dropping at 21, 22, 23, and 24. Basically, what's going to happen is as this drops, we're going to be dispensing a row of TNT. So, of course, this TNT needs to be shot with our sand power, so it's being stacked in our sand. But basically, what's going to happen is we're going to fire TNT at 20. We're going to fire TNT at 21, 22, 23, 24. What that's going to look like at the wall is because TNT is going to be rendered before sand when it is fired from a dispenser is we are going to get sand rendered at the bottom. So the first thing that's going to fire is your hammer. Second thing that's going to go off is your slab bust. And you'll recall in the last video or a couple of videos ago that I said we needed our sand rendered after our slab bust. This is one of those reasons. Because if we have our sand, say, rendered before our slab bust, well, A, we're not going to stack on a slab. Um, but B, we're also going to have troubles here with our pseudo nuke. So our pseudo nuke's actually going to be going off before a hammer and it's going to be spraying sand absolutely everywhere. We don't want that. So we're going to be rendering our sand after our slab bust. And this is going to be the very, very first bit of TNT that renders. So this is going to be rendered on the same resident tick as this sand here. And of course it stacks at the bottom because it is rendered before the sand, but it is on the same resident tick. 
But basically, what's going to happen is we said this was going off at 20, so that batch of TNT there is going to be going off at 20. Next thing we come up to is this bit here. We're going to render TNT at 21 as well, and we're going to get a nice little stack of about... It, it depends on the amount of TNT that you do have in your pseudo-nuke, but it's going to end in this block here. So that block there, you're going to have give, get however much TNT you have in your pseudo-nuke in this block here. Same thing goes for 22. This block here, very, very bottom of the stack, you're going to get however much TNT you have rendered there. 23, you're going to get all that TNT rendered there. And of course, 24, you're going to get all this TNT rendered at the bottom here. So if you don't see already, um, I'll explain why this is such a fun nuke to use. This is an absolute pain to patch. Because it isn't one continuous hole, you can't just wall gen in the middle of it. You have a bunch of individual little holes through their walls that aren't connected by other holes. So you're going to get an absolute mess of holes through every single wall at differing Y heights that you can't just gen bucket patch. So that in most cases, if you're going to attempt someone with a pseudo nuke, often it's going to result in them just like full chunk busting all of these walls. Additionally, it will also knock those sand walls down. So if you are shooting below build height, um, it will knock sand walls down a lot better as well. Not as good as an efficient nuke, but it's going to do a lot of fucking damage to a sand wall. So I guess with that being said, and with sort of demonstrating how that is rendered, we're going to explain why game ticks are so important. So the reason why game ticks are so important, you'll recall that I did say that this um, sand here is rendered per redstone tick. Now, I didn't say it's rendered per game tick. So, basically, what we can do is we can utilize this game tick offset on one of the sides of the sand comp. So, if we, say, have this uh, sand comp here, or this side of the sand comp, we split these pistons up, so they're pushing in from this side, and this side, for example. Oh, shit. I did not mean to do that. Oopsies. Oh, that's actually going to, like, piss me off, I think. Yeah. There we go. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to switch those pistons over so they're like extended like that instead and we'll have another one like where that piston head sort of is. But basically what that's going to do is that's going to mean we can time each side of the sand comp separately. So and if we offset say the left side by a game tick and we have this going off at say, or actually I'm going to make it go off here because it will be, it will be even. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to have that go off 20.5, 21.5. Uh, 22.5 and so on. Everything on this side here is going to be offset by that game tick. So when I do say 20, say 20 on this side here, I do mean resident ticks, I don't mean game ticks. Um, so it's personal preference for me to count in resident ticks instead of game ticks. So I'll always just have a 0.5 or just a whole number when I'm referring to something getting offset by a game tick. Hence why I have that 0.5 here. So if we have this side going off at 23.5 and then 24.5, what we're actually going to get on the wall is going to be quite different from what we have here. So say if we sort of have this same order here, but we'll have one side of the cannon, say we'll have the left side, the game tick side, uh, rendered with or just with red sand, and we'll have the other side rendered with normal sand. So the first thing that's going to fall is because this side's getting... Um, priority because this is a game tick before uh, your it's a game tick before your left hand side of the comp so the right hand side is going to go first and what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that this is all red sand so what's going to happen is you're going to get on this wall here you're going to get your 10 normal sand stacking first because that's the side that's going to go first so 8, 9, 10 but now because we have that offset by game tick we're actually going to get 10 red sand stacking now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But 10, I hope it's 10. And you'll see that because we actually have this subdivided by game ticks now, and half the comp is going off a game tick before the other half, we're going to get a pattern a lot more like this. And why this is so powerful is because you can have your pseudo nuke also offset by a game tick. So if we just stack three up. So this is what it's going to look like at the wall. But basically what you're going to do now is 
you can offset half your pseudo also by a game tick. So instead of having TNT like that, I'm going to have TNT at the bottom again. Standard little hole. But now what we're going to do is, because we have half of our pseudo nuke rendered um, or offset by a game tick, we're also going to get a hole at each pseudo nuke position um, every game tick as well. So we're actually going to be able to double the amount of holes we have uh, on this wall by offsetting our comp and also by offsetting our pseudo nuke by one game tick. So I will get into a practical lesson with using a proper pseudo nuke on a later cannon so I can show you how I personally like to wire it and set it up. Um, but this is just going to be an explanatory video on how it works and I guess how you can abuse these game ticks. So you can see here by offsetting half our sand comp by a game tick and offsetting half our pseudo nuke by a game tick and actually lining those up you will be able to double the amount of holes in this wall um, with your pseudo nuke by just having that offset in. So that's that's sort of pseudo nuking in a nutshell I guess. Um, I'll make a dedicated cannon that only uses a pseudo nuke in a later video but I just wanted to get this out of the way here while I've got everyone's attention with game ticks. Um, so in the next video we'll be covering probably efficient nuking and then the video after we'll be covering web bus nuking. So apart from that I'll catch you all in the next video.